Well, it's been a while, a couple of weeks. Good morning. Welcome back. Uh, welcome back to the studio. I'm Brian Main, John Bagnesco, Tiger Palafox. We are here, raring to go. Hope you had a good week, and I hope you're starting a weekend off on the right track. Well, but I think you are, because uh, guess what? You're with uh, Garden America. John's got his uh, laptop on and uh, getting a little feedback, John? I don't think I that people... got to figure can... how to turn off the uh, Just unplug your computer. Anyway, Tiger, I'm going to toss to you because John pulled the old Brian Main trick from uh, the last several months. I don't even have my laptop rolling this morning. Yeah, what happened to it? I just figured, don't need I don't it need anymore? it. I've got this one computer up here. You've got like three computers over there. I've got so. Uh, <laughs> All right, out, I got it. I got it. Okay, a little so, feedback there. You uh, said it's been two weeks. It's been a couple of weeks since I we've been in trouble studio. remembering from week to week, let alone two weeks. Hey, just a quick. Uh, I want to reach out to some of the people who join us before we go on the air. Uh-huh. We go on live at 8.06, but you will see our video prior to that. You'll see us talking and chatting, but we're not on the air yet. 8.06, in case you're a bit confused or just are anxious to hear the show. Technical yeah. reasons, right? Technical just reasons, Just want to make right? sure everything's running before we start. Exactly. So, um, hey, guys, a successful rose show and auction. We had a great time. Marion Ross, you know. What a gem. Uh, what a, what gem, a gem, huh? She's such a sweet lady. And just so congenial to everybody. Yes. 94 years old. It w- I don't uh, believe it. Can't be. Yeah. No, she was so sharp. Yes. And um, you can see her on the video, right? We have a yes. posted a video. If you go to gardentube.com or uh, maybe gardenamerica.com. Right. There's a lot of places to see the video. I think on our Facebook page, I think uh, you said GardenTube. GardenTube.com. And also right. YouTube. And, hey, speaking of our show. I got an email this week from uh, Amazon Prime, you know, thanking me for being a member of Amazon Prime in good standing. And, hey, we have something else to give you for free. Wow, what's that? Video. All your favorite podcasts are right here. I click. I'm looking at the icons, and pretty soon, there's Garden America. Oh. So hmm. when you click the Garden America icon on Amazon Prime, when you go to the podcast page, all of our shows are right there in order. Perfect. One after another. Yet yeah. another place to watch our show, to hear our show. So if you ever say, I don't know where you guys are, I can't hear you. Hogwash. Where aren't we? Hogwash, John. <laughs> where aren't we? That's yeah. a, that's... What, what was it? Where was the um, the person that follows the Happy Days from? What 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 part of the country, the world? Oh, Italy. Italy, yeah. What's, Jeez, what's that... that story, John? You told us a story this morning. A Guinness World Record of what? Uh, I think his name was, his first name for sure was Giuseppe, but I think it was Ganelli, Giuseppe Ganelli. He has the world's largest collection of Happy Days memorabilia. And he found out about our auction and that we named a rose after Marion Ross and sent us an email and said, I, I need more information. Yeah. And yeah. it was verified, too, because uh, you mentioned that Marion Ross's son said, oh, yeah, we, we know this oh, yeah, guy. We, Right. We're very don't, familiar. Don't you get roses from Italy, but they have to be routed different ways, right? Sometimes. So, <laughs> so. Yeah, you're not allowed about, to import roses direct from Italy. How about, can go? Can you go, can you send one to Italy? Probably. So it's much easier to send right. than to get. Right. Well, same thing with <laughs> France, right? France has like, what, a two-year quarantine, it seems like? Well, there's I'm only, for people? For people? only oh, five roses. countries in the world you can bring roses in from. And. Um, to the United States. To the United States, right. And. Uh, France is one of them. Mm-hmm. And I've never sent roses to any other country except Germany. Really? Yeah. Oh. Hey, Tug, we oh, should explain would've... quickly this this shot here. Oh, okay. uh, those of us watching on Facebook Live, you'll see a shot of Tiger and John's head peeking up behind one of the cameras. But uh, I, this is the subject or the topic of today's show, right? Yeah, we're going to be talking with George, the... Um, the, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> uh, um, the um, uh, person behind Agro and Fertilizers. And in front of us, we've got some uh, bags of the fertilizers. We've got worm casting, fertilizer, and rock dust. Have you ever used rock dust before, John? Uh, I'm not going to comment because I'll just get in trouble. Uh, <laughs> Which means he, he has not used it recently. Yeah? Is that what that means? Yes. No. <laughs> but it says, I saw, I saw use rock dust as a fertilizer. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we're going to be talking with him about different um, fertilizers for your garden and how they work and what to think about when you're fertilizing your yard. Also, uh, the newsletter this week, uh, I, see, I, I learn a lot from our newsletters. Uh-huh. Besides the articles, the information, I learned that this is the weekend that we fall back. We're going to gain an hour this weekend, yeah. tonight. Tonight. Yeah, that's exciting. An hour. Going to gain an hour. So 
So you get a Don't little jump more ahead. rest. Make sure you fall back. You fall back. You're jumping ahead is spring. Right. But now it's 7 o'clock in the morning. It won't be pitch dark. And did you learn about the um, Iron Throne rose this week and also from the newsletter? Which it. which rose was auctioned for the most? Was it Iron Throne? The Iron Throne went for $350. And that one that I wanted that was variegated children's. Yeah, yeah, you bailed S- out. SOS children's rose. Was how much? Oh, no. I could have gone you higher. That, you bailed out on well, that. So who would do you remember who was bidding for that one? It was a it was a proxy bid, but the woman, I can't remember her name. Yeah, she was on my right hand side. Yeah. And you yeah, on I the don't left. know if we want to announce her name on okay. the radio. <laughs> but um but anyways, um, you know, very sweet lady. And it I didn't realize she was proxy bidding. And she is so sweet. And I was just like so that's it. I, you, I feel bad. Like I don't want to I don't want to keep bidding up against her right. because I was she, she did not seem she she just held her paddle and didn't move it like I'm like wow she's gonna really go for this yeah uh, and, and, and and for those that that need clarification she knows exactly how much she can spend exactly so keep the paddle up until you get to that money yeah to, but to the, she she had a straight face and right. I was like not gonna win this so I finally after a, a few back and forth I was like all right fine she can yeah. just have it but luckily I, I didn't. thought you were gonna bid on the Suzanne Rose. I, I thought I was, too, but then when I saw the SOS Children's one, I got more excited. Really? Yeah. Well, that's really an interesting rose. The Susanna or the what? Children's one? The Well, both, actually, yeah. but the uh, SOS Children's rose yeah. got a lot of colors going on. Hey, yeah, John, how about some of the winners, though, the behind-the-scenes, not the live auction, the, the roses that impressed you or people that you know that entered and, and won? Was there anything that stuck out in your mind in terms of roses? You know, there was so much going on there. I know. Yeah. I was trying to keep everything straight. Um, the San Diego artist, uh, Nancy Plank, mm-hmm. uh, painted a, a picture of the Marion Ross Rose. Gosh, her paintings are wonderful. Yeah, and I, th- I thought she did a great job, and it was really nice of her. She's in the video, too, by the way. If you want to see that uh, painting she did. Maybe she next gave year it- we can auction off some of her paintings. Good golly. Well, that was- yeah. Oh, we didn't auction her no. paintings. Her paintings were for sale, though. Right, yeah. if you wanted right. One. And so um, getting back to Marion Ross again and her entourage, just wonderful people. We weren't sure, you know, how healthy she was, obviously, prior to the auction. You know, right. hopefully she'll be on time and she'll be able to, you know, at least interact a little bit. She took over the show. Yeah, she was great. Yeah, she was great. She was yeah. wonderful. So neat to be able to see her. And it really seemed she was very appreciative. Right. You know, her yeah. gratitude just came across with. Whenever she spoke or just however she was with people, people would ask, can I take pictures with you? Can oh, yeah. She was gracious. Yeah. She yeah. was very gracious. Very gracious. Yeah. yeah. Um, I like when she uh, uh, stood up and she said, all of you are my children. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I've raised all of you. I've yeah. raised all of you. Yeah. You know, one, one of the – you go back in the history of television, you know, one of the TV moms. Yes. Right up there with uh, Mama Partridge, Shirley Jones, and Barbara Billingsley, Leave it to Beaver. You got Mary and Ross and – all these moms who a lot of kids did grow up with. Yeah. Yeah. The of course, happy Brady. days came. Oh, mine was the Brady Bunch, I think, in the Oh, yeah, the Brady. Ones. Oh, yeah, Floyd mine, Henderson. Mine were later. I was, uh, I was in college when happy days came out, so. Yeah. She didn't really raise me, but maybe she gave me some good advice. Mine was the TV show, I Remember Mama. It was a TV <laughs> Which show? I think it was in the early <laughs> I 50s. I Remember Mama. Oh, wow. Yeah. You don't, right? No. Not, Not at all. enough. Wow, I remember yeah. Mama. Yeah, I I really identified with her. She was nice. <laughs> so we're going to be talking with George today about worm castings, fertilizer, and maybe various ways of uh, helping your garden grow, as they say. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, for a lot of the organic gardeners, this is the time of year where you're thinking about some soil prep going into the mm-hmm. next year. Um, you're thinking about amendments that you can add to your soil to get them ready for the fall. Um, mm-hmm. If you're in kind of the West or Southern California areas. So, yeah, we're going to be talking with George to talk about uh, fertilizers and worm castings. Speaking of that, John, we got about a minute or so. Uh, when do you cut back your roses? Is it too early to cut them back? Way too early. It is way too early. It's too early to, to even think about it. How about January? That's okay. Okay. What about if, sure. you, what if you're out in Michigan? If you're in Michigan, you're not even going outside in January. <laughs> You know, in Michigan, you know, in those cold climates, people cut back their roses after the snow melts. And the main part of pruning is to cut out everything that's dead. <laughs> Died. Yeah, it's that true. Died. 
Uh, hey, Joyce says good morning from the San Fernando Valley. Good to hey, have somebody in L.A. County. I hear I hear in the northern central part of California, it's actually kind of raining already. Redding has rain. Somebody yeah. checked in this morning oh, okay. early on and said, uh, yeah, enjoying we're, the rain in Redding. We're not going to get rain until the Monday, I think. More yeah. rain. Yes. Monday? I think, I think it. it's Tuesday. Oh, is it now Tuesday? I think John okay. is our meteorologist. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually he's surprised. Closer. You know. He's, He's out there farther than I us, trust so. him more than I do Alexa or Siri for the weather. <laughs> I just want to state that for the record. Okay, we're going to take our first break of the day. This is the end of segment number one, kind of the warm up, the monologue. We're going to get George on the phone. Do stay with us. Uh, those on Facebook Live, questions, comments with our guest or one of us, feel free. Those on Biz Talk Radio, welcome. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you to your team. Uh, this is last week's show, pre recorded, but again, you can always watch us on Facebook Live. Go to our Facebook page, Garden America Radio Show. Back after these messages on BizTalk Radio. Okay, we are back after that break. Uh, those of you on Biz Talk Radio, thank you for tuning in. And again, those uh, on Facebook Live, stand by. We've got George ready. But first of all, we just couldn't do a show without John's quote of the week from uh, the old coach of the UCLA Bruins, John. John Wooden. Yep. Right? And he coached... <laughs> right. uh, coached um, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Bill Walton, didn't he? Bill Walton, Yeah, right. sure, of course. I was going to say San Diego. Right. right. San Walton. Diego's own Bill Walton. Right. Anyway, he said, I grew up on a farm. We learned that there was a season to plant, a season to water, and a season to harvest. The planting and watering could be laborious, but without those stages, there would never be a harvest. And without those uh, laborious things that you have to do, it wouldn't be worth it. Put all that time and effort into it, a little hard work, and you see the, the fruits of your results. The what? Labor. <laughs> The results of your labor. Don't even listen to Fruits me. of your labor. Fruits of this, your results. This is, this is where I tossed a tiger and kind of sneak out of the room and bring on George. Go ahead, Tom. All right. Hey, George, good morning. Thank you for joining us on Garden America. How are you doing today? Good morning, Tiger. Good morning, John and Brian. Hey, Thank George. Thank you for so, having me. I'm doing well so far. So good. Yeah. <laughs> well, wait I to like the, wait that to the... uh, first comment and about hard labor. Yes. <laughs> and uh, there's one thing I just want to mention. The products we would talk about, you can apply actually any time of the year. Oh. Different to the farming schedule of we planting then, we, you know, we hopefully it's going to rain, and then we wait till everything pops up. So All right. Timing is not naturally important for what we do here with the, with the products from AgroWind. Uh, it's a matter that you are actually applying them because plants take what they need at the time they need to. Yeah, John. John's always lived by that uh, motto right there that there's fertilizer in the soil. And right. The plants will take it when they want it. Right. So yep. as, long, as long as it's, it's kind of there when they need it, then they're going to be happy. And, hey, George, first off, let's start off with the um, name AgroWin. How – how did you come by that name for your uh, product line? All right. May I mention I'm of Swiss origin. So uh, I had a good friend over there who made granulated rock dust. And he had the name on his product, Agro Win. It's comprised of two names, like German names usually have multiple components. And I'm Swiss German. So... Agro, as from agronomic, and win, like a winner. 
Oh. So we call it an agronomical winner. There you go. Agro win. <laughs> All right. You pronounce it different sometimes. Some people say agro win and say agro or, you know, agro win. You hear many different sounds about that, yes. Yeah. Not that easy. Yeah, but it's a fun name. I like this. I like the story behind it. Um, oh, yeah. Now, you know, mm-hmm. worm castings have been around for a, a long time. I mean, and, since there were worms. Yeah. Yeah. Ever since the worms well, started eating. Since, um, <laughs> since, I guess, earth or soil creation, right? Yeah. So they have um, to have organic matter for worms to digest, to eat, right? Right, right. Mm. So, so let's talk about the worm castings first. Um, okay. You know, I think a lot of people know worm castings. You know, they become very popular as far as additives and soil mixes. Um, yes. You know, they see them in garden centers often, but they might not know some of the um, benefits to worm castings. Can you let our listeners know about why someone might use worm castings? Yes. Uh, first, I would like to make a distinction between uh, – the pure casters, we have 99% pure worm casting in our bags. And then there is the other guys who make a process of wormy composting. So composting process to obtain castings takes a lot longer. And so they still can claim they have pure castings within the wormy compost process. So the question would be how much percentage would be in such a wormy composting bag. Okay, so how to determine what is what? Only by application rate. Okay, but let me answer your question first. I call my bags, it's full of microbiology, has lots of bacterium, protozoa, beneficial nematodes. Water holding capacity, that's where the most important thing is. And at that point, we have over 200% measured at the lab. That's, okay. Are you here? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. So, okay. so there's all the micronutrients and microorganisms value in the casting themselves, and then they re, worm castings will help retain moisture in the soil. Yes. Okay. And moisture releases, you know, bacterium and protozoa as it's a manure base. They have lots of biological stuff in there. And uh, at that point, the water holding plus the the elements of life within the casting, like all manures do. Manures also do carbon sequestrations, we are learning. And this is quite a very good. So the more pure the manure, the more carbon will be sequestrated. Okay. And uh, at that point, yes, there are many benefits from it. We hear that it's good for warding off, you know, bugs. But I always say you put it out there at that point, really it changes the plant's life. It increases the organic matter in the soil, yeah. obviously. Mm-hmm. And then and you might even in- introduce some worms in there, right? In the casting, sometimes there's worms. Um, uh, um, we actually screen out the eggs and the worms. Okay. We also go into the gulf. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you go to more northern golf courses and you would tell them, hey, we got worm castings, they say, yeah, uh-huh. and we have lots of worms in our putting greens and we don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So there's <laughs> actually some people that don't want. If you have it on putting want... greens and you have any life worms in there, as you know, they can make those little heaps. Oh, yeah. All will go, you know, not quite roll straight. <laughs> well, that's part of the challenge, right? You're not a good golfer if you're not dodging a little worm casting. Yeah, play around the worm. Yeah, play it Actually, as it lies. I have a great video on the website. Uh, you know, if somebody's interested in how it spreads on a golf course, there's a video on, on all the benefits and all that there, too. Okay. Um, so so one of the things, one George... More, a few more points you wanted to know the benefits. It will also reduce the water runoff because... If you keep the soil at a certain moisture level, it pulls in more water. Mm. So it will penetrate and it changes the soil structure to benefit. So that's another good good point to make. So that mm-hmm. you know, one of the things that you know people out there want to look at is, um, you know, is it a pure worm castings or is it a worm compost? Because it kind of sounds like to say yeah. pure worm castings are kind of a, a concentrated form of these castings. Compost could Correct. be diluted. So you might have to buy more to get the same benefits of it. 
Hey, George, yeah. we're, we're going to have to take a break. We're going to have to take a break here in about 30 seconds. When we get back, we'll continue talking with George from Agawin uh, Products, and we'll be moving on to talk about what rock dust is. What is rock dust? Stay tuned and find that out on BizTalk Radio, Facebook Live. So, again, do stay with us. Talking about worm castings this morning, our guest is George. We are Garden America. Thank you for tuning in. We were off last week. It is good to get back into the studio. John Bagnasco, Tiger Palafox, I'm Brian Main. Back after these messages from our good friends, our supporters, our sponsors from BizTalk Radio. Welcome back to the show. Those on BizTalk Radio tuned in. We do appreciate it. This is hour number one. Hopefully you carry both hours, hour two. But uh, nevertheless, so we're glad you check in each and every weekend. Back here on Facebook Live, John Bagnasco, Tiger Palafox. I'm Brian Main. Yes, John, our guest is George this morning. We're talking about worm castings, Tiger. Yeah, and we're going to move on to rock dust. Um, so, George, another product that you guys produce is rock dust. Um, can you tell us a little bit about you know, this is something that people might 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 not be familiar with. Can you tell us a little bit about what rock dust is? Yes. So we actually do not produce it. That will oh. be a volcano who does. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we will just grind it down to a very small particle size. Out of it's actually an European product. And why I found that out of Europe and do the importation is. The U.S. so far has, I haven't found any rock dust who has a calcium-magnesium ratio, which is nearly one-to-one one in proportion, or in ratio. So that's very important to have balanced nutrients. And calcium-magnesium, as you know, are pretty important to plants. And if you raise the calcium levels, magnesium comes down and vice versa. So that's a big benefit of the rock dust. Now, the particle size is also very important. The finer you can grind it, the more you can actually distribute on the square footage. So a 10-pound bag will cover 1,000 square feet. Mm. The, the largest particle size is 0 0.06 millimeter. So we call it 6 mu, but it's pretty fine. Yeah. And so the rest is all finer. So yeah. for big agriculture, they would love to have it in pallets, but it's very difficult to homogeneously make single pallets. So we keep it as a powder, and the powder form has good residual in application rate. And the rock just really supplies all the necessary macro micronutrients. It also helps the seed to germinate better. And it will also increase the bricks in plants. Most people know the bricks from grapes. They measure the sugar content. So bricks equals sugar in the plants. I actually found out if you have a broccoli, the flower head, which we usually like, and some people cut the stem off, the sugar is actually in the stem and not oh. in the flower top. Mm. Yeah, I remember, I remember somebody, a chef, telling us that one time that, yeah, oh. the stems are actually... The sugar? The, the more flavorful yep. part right. of the broccoli than the flower. Everybody eats the florets, but the stems are actually the better part to eat. Yes, it's more beneficial. Yeah. That is correct. Hey, so, George, real quick, and, don't, don't want to interrupt, but yeah. John John had asked about the castings, and you brought up this point on the um, rock dust, too, about, you know, when you're when you're talking about how pure these products are, the, that yep. they go a long way. You know, someone right. like John who has acres of property, and to think that, Oh, you know, um, you know, a ten-pound bag can help me out in this whole area or something is shocking because most people are used to buying a bag of fertilizer and using, you know, cups of it at a time on one plant. Um, uh -huh. You know, where it seems like you know yeah. we were reading your your uh, castings and you're talking about, you know, 
10 cups 10 per, pounds per 100 square feet this yeah. is quite dramatic yes yeah and then on the castings you were saying you know they can you know go pretty far as well so so people who need mm-hmm. to understand the benefits of these concentrated products can go a long ways that's that's a yes. good thing to know yes they're very how it's called consumer friendly in the wallets because the application rates for rock dust is really insane and you can incorporate the powder in any liquids or apply it to any even synthetic fertilizers and it will change oh. you know this is the thing is the, i call it my rock this is non-dominational <laughs> <laughs> it goes everywhere yeah so you know and also it's a good thing the seed germination will be better so it starts from the very beginning Mm-hmm. I believe the seed germination comes from that paramagnetics in the rock dust. Okay. As it's volcano, volcano, they have pretty decent paramagnetic powers. Most people don't know much, but if you read a book from Phil Callahan, he will explain you all about it. And it's all about frequencies, okay? We all live from frequency. You probably know better than me. Sound makes the music or a voice makes the, you know, what it meant. Yeah. <laughs> no, so, I just had a quick question on the rock yeah. dust. Um, a, sure. a lot of our listeners are familiar with rock phosphate, yes. but but your rock dust is different than that, right? That is correct. Rock phosphate is zero nitrogen, phosphate 3%, and zero phos- uh, potassium. So it's pure phosphor. Now, lots of most soils are usually not deficient in phosphate, but it is locked up unless microbiology, if you put the worm casting in back to that, or rock dust, it will actually unleash what's there in the ground as well. Mm. So yeah. the rock dust has all conceivable micro and macronutrients. You know, so we have calcium, magnesium, iron, it doesn't have nitrogen, obviously, because it's an inorganic compound. But it has iron, magnesium, calcium, you know, all that available. And calcium, magnesium is super balanced. And as I say, I have not found any other who has that calcium, magnesium ratio at the right place. And yeah. also we have very low in the heavy metals part. I, I, <laughs> I heard one guy on a YouTube video goes, oh, rock dust. Yeah, you need a little bit of this rock dust, a little bit of that rock dust. And, you know, you can mix all the rock dust together and put it in the ground. And I go, wait a minute, each rock dust has different properties of heavy metals. So rock dust is the source of the cumulative of heavy metals. Yeah. Worm casting is a microbiology bag. The, the more microbiology of different feed and food sources uh, makes a different microbiology a component. So in rock dust, it's totally different. So you it- need to find one A good rock dust source and then figure out how that works in your soil to your plants and it works very good plant planting transplant or planting shock eliminator and bricks increaser and better seed germination these are nearly essential to all plants Mm. yeah and so george i mean the nice thing also we're talking about these specific products the castings the rock dust but then you've gone one step further and started creating some fertilizers where you're you know, blending these products for people and then getting some, some nitrogen, phosphorus, and potash also into the mix so, you know, the plants yeah. have overall health. Um, did we have a You've got a couple a of questions, John. The first one is from Rick. Uh, Rick in Idaho is wondering about there was um, uh, a product here in San Diego, oh, maybe 15 years yeah, ago, 20 10, years, ago years ago now. Yeah. Um, there was Alaskan humus, which was very biologically active, and he yes. wonders how the the uh, biology uh, biological activity in Alaskan humus would compare to worm castings. <laughs> I have never done that, but I send rock dust to Alaska to grow bigger pumpkins because they have some big competition oh. for that. Yes. So worm castings, uh, not too much to Alaska because they have really good soils and undisturbed. Right. We have very arid and water-needing you know, soils, so it's a little bit different when you go into mountainous or 
pristine soils areas. So I believe that uh, the Alaska soils will be super beneficial, yeah. And then Jose's got a question. We we harvest Canadian peat, you know, you do this with that. So from each region, you have a different composition of soils and uh, possible products to be made out from. There was another question. One more, and then we got a break after this. Okay, well, Jose wants to know, uh, he says worm castings are supposed to deter whitefly on hibiscus. He wants to know if the worm castings would deter uh other white fly or bugs on other plants. Do we have to take a break, Brian? No, before... we're, we're, uh, let's see. We got about a minute. Okay, George, we're going to okay. have a minute, and then we got to take a break. Uh, there, there is a lot of claims on this, but think about this: the more healthier you make the soil, the more nutritious you make the soil. It works for humans the same way. The better the plants will drive, and the plants will drive good. It will be okay if a plant go bad because of malnutrition, at that point it becomes more acidic. So the plant's aura, and we call it a curly and feel, it's like an imagery of an uh, um, MRI, which is colorful. And so at that point, when the imagery, by going acidic, the plant changes, it will send those messages, the frequency goes to the bugs, and they go and get that. So if you have a healthy soil and you use good nutrition at that point, you should ward off most any uh, bugs. All right. Hey, George, we're going to take a break. When we get back, we'll continue talking with George from AgoWin Fertilizers um, um, and and how to get a hold of his products. Absolutely. And, again, those on uh, Facebook Live, questions, comments, we have another one coming up. So, again, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Those on BizTalk Radio, those on Facebook Live, as we're talking about worm castings, rock dust here, rock dust, uh, dust, I should say. Can I take two or three on that? (laughs) Rock dust. Thank you, John. Just in time for a break here. I'm going to bail out on Garden America. Okay, we are back. I did my mouth exercises. I should be ready to go for this uh, final segment on BizTalk Radio, hour number one. But, of course, uh, we keep on going on Facebook Live. Plenty of show left as uh, we continue our conversation, wrap things up with George, talking about the rock dust and uh, humus, worm castings, Tiger. Yeah, well, you know, um, I can't remember who had asked the question, but it's a great question because they talk about uh, whitefly on hibiscus and how worm castings help prevent that. And a lot of people think, oh, there's something in the castings about how, you know, it can prevent it. And they've done research. And what George, I think, you know, was getting to is that it's more that the health of the plant helps prevent the white fly. Um, Worm castings and rock dust and fertilizers, organic fertilizers, help the plants produce their natural oils, help produce um, their natural um, abilities to fight off bugs, disease and things like that. And so, so in feeding the plant, that's how they ward off the white fly, so on and so forth. Exactly. So I think it would work on other plants, you know, that maybe are prone to some of these sucking insects if they just help produce the natural uh, oils and um, protective aspects of the plant. Um, it's not so much that the casting specifically have something in them for white fly specific or hibiscus uh, <clears throat> specific. Um, Mm. so, um, you know, where, and then the other thing, you know, I mean, John has talked about this before, where when we use synthetic fertilizers, sometimes that actually decreases the ability of the plant to produce healthy, um, foliage. Um, it's green and it's growing, but it's very, um, uh, well, you have thinner cell walls, so it's easier for the sucking insects. You you know what? It's not as sturdy. It's not as vigorous. It's like a human. You can look great on the outside, but on the inside, things aren't going well. Right. And so, you know, that's where I think some people put on these synthetic fertilizers, and that's where the bugs come because I almost feel like it's attracting them to it because it's an easy prey, (laughs) easy prey plant then at that point. As John likes to say, it's all about the cell walls, Tiger. Yeah. Hey, George, so. Tiger. Yeah. Uh, I think the main part is not many soils have that microbiology Mm -hmm. uh, and manure is a concentrated microbiology which then chews on the existing grounds and feeds the plants that way by converting nutrients. The same with the rock dust. Rock dust actually 
holds good points of moisture as well. Rock dust is a fast-acting bacterializer. So if you would put rock dust into a compost, it will decrease the compost faster. Yeah. So you're, that you're, most people don't know. Yeah, rock you're, dust has many benefits also. It, it takes care of ammonium odors, which you know many stables like horse stables, pig stables, and whatever. So if you actually, they would use rock dust, they can eliminate that odor, odor and have more mineralized manure if they would use that. So, and I think the more different types of manure, if I would be a composter, the more different types of manure you can collect and compost, including, you know, green compost, not just manure compost. At that point, you have a gazillion, billions, billions of different types of microbes. Yep. Uh, so beneficial bacteria, fungi, protozoa, nematodes, uh, beneficials most. But you can go in balance. So it's not easy to do a, a very good compost. So it can be too watery, it can be too fungal, it can be too strong bacterial. So everything has to be in equilibrium. Balancing is where my main thing is focusing whatever I do. Yeah. Like lifestyle too. If you don't balance, you're <laughs> in balance. You cannot just go to McDonald's and think you, you live healthy. You know? <laughs> Definitely not. Some people may live, but you just don't know how. Hey, John, was there another question? Uh, there were several. I don't know oh. if we're going to have time to get to them all, but we'll try to get some quick answers on these. Carla in sure. Huntington Beach um, says that she buys a lot of pumice, and she wants to make sure she understands correctly that it's completely different from your rock dust. Pumice? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, pumice totally is for different. drainage, right? No, that's why it has a different name. It's pumice. <laughs> it's okay. not rock dust. There you go. That's why we Very call different. it rock dust instead so, of pumice, Carla. Pumice that's is, different. It's is, is like... Similar, I would just say, for me, I just next thing will come to, to peat moss, you know, pumice, peat moss, all these, these are filling agents for potting mixes. Yeah. Rock dust is a fertility issue, and it's very potent. So uh, little hold, goes hold. a long way. So don't overuse rock dust. So it flies like powder sugar over the cake. I think of a tiramisu. <laughs> there we go. A little dust powder over the top. And that's why you get the mileage of 10 pounds a thousand square feet, and it's potent. Yeah. And then uh, and you can put it into fertigation system like Easy Flow, any any liquid injection system. As long as you have a, a little bit of agitation, then it will suspend all of the product. Okay. And George, also works. Oh, George, we, <laughs> we, we we want to get to a couple more questions, George. Yeah, Please. and and when I say quick answers, George, that's the yeah. opposite of what you just gave. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, our our good buddy John. Cl complete. <laughs> our, yeah, absolutely. Our good buddy John Clements wants to know if you still do soil injections of liquefied worm uh, castings to save trees. I think that's a good idea. I have an arborist friend who actually does that. He has my spray rig. I used to do that. Ah. And I would just say, if you apply top and work it lightly into the top soil, okay, if you just top press it on soils and the sun hits it, it becomes hydrophobic. The most, most release of the, of the bacterial and fungal uh, thing will be when you just lightly crowd it into the top soil. You don't have to go deep because then you water over and I like irrigation hats, which stimulate rainfall. That's what nature does. And then you can spread it everywhere. And at that point, it sinks down into the soil like a juice coming down below. Awesome. Hey, and last the question. The dust will be so fine, it also goes down very quickly and breaks up compaction both products. George, our, our last question comes from Rick in Idaho, and he wants to know if you would use, continue to use uh, liquid kelp along with your products. Yes, why not? Okay, yeah. kelp perfect. Kelp has a, a little bit you have to watch on kelp. The only part on kelp, it's pretty expensive these days, and, and you have to watch the sodium. All right. Hey, George, all right. Fertilizer. Um, fertilizeronline.com's website for more information about the AgroWind products, how to get them, where they're sold, and also more information on the products itself. Thank you very much for joining us, George. Hope you have a good rest of the weekend, and uh, don't forget to set your clocks back. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you, George. Thank you.
<laughs> bye bye. Have a good weekend. I appreciate you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. We appreciate you too. A lot of good information. Thank yeah. you, George. Hey, we're just in time for our break. Uh, Biz Talk Radio news coming up top of the hour. We come back at six minutes after. Uh, those on Facebook Live are going to be back even sooner. So, any questions, comments on today's topic, or you want to take the show in a different direction, talk about anything else in this wonderful world of gardening and horticulture, let us know on Facebook right there on the comments section. This is Garden America, Brian Maine, John Begnasco, Tiger Palafox, back after news, Biz Talk Radio, and more on Facebook Live. Okay, we are back in action. Uh, those on BizTalk Radio, this is our number two. And again, those that uh, listen to our number one, we hope you get some good information. Remember, those on BizTalk Radio, tune in and watch us and hear us live on Facebook. Go to our Facebook page, Garden America Radio Show. And again, a big thank you to Stephanie and her team to keep us on the air nationally, guys. I use some of those products in my garden. Where do people buy them? Well, we have them at Mission Hills Nursery, but also if they go to fertilizeronline.com, they can... Uh, Find out other local stores and order some online as well. But you have a two Mission Hills Nursery. Yes, we do. do you, now, you guys, you don't mail order, do you? You don't send stuff we don't. out? We do not. Right. Yeah. I mean, I guess we do do some products. I don't think we do any of the agro wind products, though. Um, but, I mean, you know, kind of to the point, the reason why I like George and his products is it's not pushing a nutrient down your throat or a uh, – nutrient down the plants it's more like healthy keeping the soil healthy it, right it, it goes back to soil health you right. know he's talking about soil uh water retention of uh, nutrient retention um diversifying the soil biology because you know we can talk all we want about a specific plant likes this soil or this ph or this nutrient but in your garden you have a wide range of plants that you really should be putting down a broad amount right. of different micronutrients organisms. So that way, whatever plant it is, it's going to grow well. In, in different times of year, they pull up differently. You know, you know, George was talking about before the show or it, in the beginning, his products can be put on any time of year. You know, there's no harm in putting down some rock dust right now because— Because you're it, not feeding plants. You're, you're just feeding soil. Yeah. So let me ask you this, you guys. Back in the old days when we used chemical fertilizer, mm -hmm. were we actually feeding the plants? Yes. And, and the difference yeah. now, organic fertilizers not feed only, the environment. Not only were we feeding the plants, we were killing the, the soil. soil. Right. Anytime you add an inorganic fertilizer to the soil, you kill something that's alive. Yep. Right. So, again, it goes back to the worm castings. You brought up a good point earlier. You know, well, did, does it get rid of, you know, whitefly and this and that? And I think people were under the impression that worm castings were getting rid of the white flies. It was right. actually feeding the plant to give it the, the, the nutrients and the basis to kill off white flies. And another plant that's really prone to white fly would be citrus. Right. They, yeah, they get right. a lot of white fly. So I think worm castings would be great for well, citrus as the well. The one thing George didn't bring up, and, and uh, this is something we talked about. You bring up the, something? <laughs> <laughs> there was one thing he didn't. Uh, but adding worm casting supposedly creates or increases the amount of chitinase in a plant. There's that and, word, chitinase. Right, and right. chitinase is an enzyme that dissolves chitin, 
which is what insect bodies are bodies. made of. Yeah. So and a thicker cell wall. So insects, if there's a plant has, if a plant has a higher level of chitinase in it, insects are going to stay away. Yeah. In other words, they're, so, they're and it, killing it themselves. It doesn't have to be a hibiscus. It can be any kind of plant. Right. So again, if I find which I have worms in my patio in the pots, that's a sign of a healthy soil, right? Yeah. The big worms, the kind you want to go fishing with, big suckers. <laughs> no, those are not the worm. Those are not the kinds of worms that they use for composting. Yeah, not They're earthworms. Not. What kind? What kind of worms They're do I have then? You, the you have the big worms. No, I'm those are skinny. No, no, skinny earthworms. Yeah, right. Well, those but, are what are the, the you the don't want European, night crawlers. You don't night want night crawlers. No, no, they're not night. No, I was the worm, being facetious. The worms yeah. for worm composting is normally called a, a red, a red worm. That's what they red are. Wiggler. Right. Um, they have a few different names, but yeah. they're skinny and they're yep, red. Skinny and long and, and red. And they eat, I guess, much faster, and they're way more. The voracious is what they are. The standard night crawl or big uh, fishing worm. So, okay, uh, let's back up here because we have some questions, John. All right. On well, Sue said she got her daffodils in the mail this week, and Ooh. she put them in the refrigerator, and she lives in Allied Gardens. Okay. And she wants to know how long she has to leave them in there. You know, actually, you don't have to leave them in there. Daffodils do not need to be refrigerated. Mm -mm. No, but milk does. <laughs> yes, make sure you keep yeah. your milk yeah. in the don't refrigerator. Don't put your milk right. on the counter and put your daffodils right. in. Leave your daffodils on the counter right. and put your milk in. See, this show goes in so many directions. It's so easy to get that mixed up. <laughs> hey, the um, you do need to refrigerate tulips and hyacinths. Mm -hmm. And crocus, you get a little better results, but... For the most part, daffodils don't need to be refrigerated, but it's not going to hurt Yeah. if you want to stick them in there for a couple of weeks and, and then maybe plant them after the rains. That's fine. And I think maybe some people get uh, mixed up when terms because then they talk about forcing, you know, daffodils. And that's when, you know, they grow them in the water or the gravel, and then they talk about how they won't bloom again the next year when you right. force it. So. You know, but yeah, they don't need to be refrigerated to get the bloom. They, I don't really like to force, force bulbs. Uh, if you coax them, it's okay. Right, but yeah. you know, well, you hold them, them down by the yeah stem and <laughs> you know, force them to do something. Yeah. yeah, that's just come on now. That's nasty. Yeah, it's just um, mean. Lenore wanted to know how uh, it would work if she put it in her containers. All those products that he was talking fine. about would work fine. You just don't need as much, right? I And this is where people need to be a bit savvy, right? Because I've heard of people planting. They're like, oh, worm casting is great. And they just use it to plant into. Right, it's a potting soil. And it no. turns into a soppy, wet, non-draining It's an additive to what you already have. Yeah, so definitely follow the instructions when it comes to, you know, the volume that you use and be careful in pots because – you don't want too much in the pot just because it it, it holds – he was talking about it holds moisture. Yeah. And in pots, you want drainage. Right. So you got to be careful with that. Soil, it's a soil transferring product. That's the additive you were talking about, yeah. STP. Yeah, STP. Yeah. Exactly. Like rock. Which we put you in guys, our car. We're all right? about Do rock they still today? make STP? ACDC? I think so. Do they? Oh, but remember there were stickers back you in the day. You used to days? have to put it in. Yeah, you, when it's you change attitude. your oil, you always put in STP. STP. And there were, you remember the STP stickers? Stone Temple Pilots? Everywhere. Stone <laughs> Temple Pilots. See, there you go. <laughs> I think it was a scam, <laughs> but I'm not sure. I think Gina is the next question, John, or comment. Gina. Gina says that uh, her bulbs are planted and the leaves are falling. Can she top dress her raised beds with them for adding natural fertilizer. So she just wants to mulch her beds. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Now, when I was growing up, you'd rake them all up to the curb and then start them on fire. <laughs> Nowadays, you rake them to the curb and some guy comes by and blows them all over the place. Uh, th that was not the best use of leaves. Leaves are great for compost, um, and they'd probably be okay in your flower beds, I, if you leave them on a lawn, the reason we raked them up is because on the lawn with snow on top, you would suffocate Disease. the lawns. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it would probably be, be good. They're absolutely better if they're worked into the soil because then they're going to decompose. Well, I was going to say, too, I mean, the problem with piling them up into beds in, in, in just a general form is there's going to be a winter storm that comes through. And wind and things is going to blow it all around, right? 
So wouldn't it be best to like rake them up and then maybe set some topsoil or something, something that would kind of hold it down a little bit? Well, yeah, then they decompose quicker. Right. Right. Yeah. So don't just leave the leaves just on a bed because I think you'll wake up one morning to just a mess all over one day. What's wrong with my mic? Nothing now. Oh, what was, was we, wrong? We well, because we had it technically speaking, so when we have a guest on and I bring their mic up on the board, I have to lower your mic. Uh -huh. And so when we, we dropped our guest, I forgot to bring your mic up. Uh -huh. So, see, I'm taking full Te responsibility. Technically speaking, when you leave your computer audio on and then during the <laughs> show, your mic. you... you <laughs> now, wait a second. All those years that you got on me for that. <laughs> right, but how, when have I ever done that? It was just today. Twice? I think Three you did it back today. in 2009. I recall Do you? second January hour of the show. 3rd, yeah. I think it was a computer malfunction. <laughs> I should have made up something a little better than that, you know, yeah. technology speaking. Anyway, yeah. Jose, thanks for having my back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, so let's see. Uh, da, 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 I can turn. We're good. I mean the rocks, though. Okay, that was Lenore. I think we covered everybody. Excellent. Yeah. Um. You know, but I, I think, you know, back to kind of what I started the show with in the products, you know, you know, Gina brought up the mulching and all that. You know, people have to think, people think, oh, we're going into wintertime. We don't do a lot right now. But if you are a, a gardener and you want something to do, this is the time of year where we're talking about you. You can apply some castings. You can mulch your beds. Maybe apply some of the organic things like rock dust or uh, humus or, um, you know, other organic material to the beds because then – you're giving them this chance to kind of overwinter. They kind of blend in with the soils, and they'll be there when you're ready to go next spring. Um, you're just a little bit ahead of the game. And I think that it makes it a little easier to work this work in the soil coming next spring too because it's already being amended by right. all that worms and stuff in the soil then. We're going to take a break. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is break time for our friends on Biz Talk Radio. Do stay with us. Uh, keep those questions coming, those comments on Facebook Live, right there, the right side of the comment page. Brian Main, John Bagnasco, Tiger Palafox, having a good time. Welcome to the weekend. Again, quick break. Biz Talk Radio back on Facebook Live after these messages on Biz Talk Radio. And just like that, we are back. We do appreciate you spending part of your weekend with us. Great way to kick off is Saturday. And again, now we talked about all the ways you can listen to us. Be sure to go to our website. Uh, that is, uh, I believe, John, www.gardenamerica.com. Three W's. Got three W's there. And then a period, not a comma. That's exactly right. You can sign up for the newsletter. Click around on our website. To visit us, if you can, at least once a day. We do appreciate that. And again, if you do have Alexa, you can ask Alexa to play Garden America show and Boy, she does it. And yeah. she's very happy to do it, too, by the way. She's got a good attitude about Lately, it. Lately, she has a good attitude. I Lately. got her and Siri in the same room. That didn't uh -oh. work out at all. Whoa. Talk about a cat fight. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. Um, Gina said she that she agrees with you, Tiger. She needs something to do in the garden since planting is over. <laughs> it is over, right. Yeah. I did just get a message, though, that she had some bulbs coming. I don't well, know she if just she said got she those. got them. She said she got them and planted them. Well, I think they split the, the shipment up. Oh, oh! So this so is an addition two, right. to what she's already planted. Maybe she got those. They were they were peonies. So I planted, what was it, five, five or six dahlias. Um, dahlias. Yeah. Just now? No. Oh. I. Do you remember? I wanted some dahlias yeah. we during a show. I ordered like five or six of them during the show. I, they came in. I planted them. They look beautiful. You brought in those. I'm trying to think of the name of that one. Yes, yeah. like Spartacus or something. Yeah, exactly. It was. Spartacus, it yeah. was. It was, was it? something Spart Spartan something or Spartacus. Yeah. And they were huge. It was. They're beautiful, right? Right. Well, only one Came has back. returned. Yeah. yeah, but it's cool. It's pretty cool. I'll take a picture of it. I'll post it. Usually, but, well, in the Midwest for sure, and in cold climates, uh, we talked about this. They dig dahlias up, up this and, time of year, yeah. and you put them in the basement. Yeah, you, no. There's no sense building a basement in your house just for the <laughs> just dahlias. For dahlias. But yeah. you, but there is. I would if I had to. John, so John, we talk about roses a lot. Mm -hmm. But John is a collector of a wide variety of plants, and we've talked about that rare plant group on Facebook before. And really he, rare plants. Really rare plants. That's what it's called, right? Yes. 
So and if you're if you're interested, it's really rare plants on Facebook, right? It's a yeah, group. Yeah, yeah. really group. rare. Yeah. And um, don't just go to rare because no. that's not even worth looking at. <laughs> yeah, like, they have they're really like, rare plants. They're like kind of like piss forums there. Right. And stuff. But um, he he was perusing the really rare plant, or he got notification, and he had one, and so he sends me a message: "Hey, Tiger, I've got this plant that's on the really rare plant. Would you like one?" I was like, "Yes, of course I would." So he brought it in studio today. And for those of you watching on Facebook Live, let me see if I can turn my camera around. Uh, tell us a little bit about this plant, John. This is a really rare plant, John. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's really rare. It was on the, their website anyway, or on their Facebook. And it's uh, the genus is Stenomesson. And we were talking about how it comes from two Greek words, uh, stenos, which uh, means narrow. Mm -hmm. And mesen, which means, uh, or mesos, which means uh, middle. Middle. So it has a narrow middle. And it's from South America, and it's in the amaryllis family. So it's a bulb, and uh, it grows almost like amaryllis. How this, long have you had it? Do you recall? Well, you know, it, I got little tiny ones to begin with. So it took about 10 years before they bloomed. And, and now they're, they've spread, and they're large-sized bulbs. So this time of year, they, they bloom. And... I think they look different. You can you can tell almost from the plant that it's in the amaryllis. You know, when you first yeah. glance at it, you it think, looks... "Oh yeah, I've seen the." No, I haven't seen those around. What is that? Yeah, it's, and it does come it. in other forms and other colors, other species of stenomesson. But um, if you are looking at it on on uh, Facebook and you want to get one, you can go to I'm trying to think of the name um, Telos T E L O S. Uh, rare bulbs or telos bulbs they have a website and you can order the bulbs from them and this plant looks very healthy and beautiful and um, a lot of times you know variegated plants are sensitive to the sun but you said this grows well in full sun yeah the, it, it can take some shade if it's inland where i am and uh, uh it gets a little but most for the most part full sun on the coast definitely full sun you know it's funny i'm um, after you and I talked about that plumeria, the, the three-colored plumeria that has the variegation, but it oh, also right. has that pinkish blush color. Right. And I was telling you I was getting all this damage, and I thought it was overwatering. I right. thought it was root rot. I thought it was just holding moisture. And so you mentioned, well, you know, one of mine gets – it just gets sunburn. Or, it's or, the same one, right? It is. Yeah. And so I moved it completely into the shade to see if that one would help with that damage on that one. Because I was checking this out. I'm like, no, there's no root rot happening here. This, this isn't holding water. And you're not overwatering it either. I, and I'm not right. overwatering it. Right. So I think it's just one that – So And it's just the one color that sunburns. It is. And I don't know if it's the pink or the white. But So do you think I have to have it in full shade protection? Because it was not only in partial sun when it was getting burned. Really? Was it during the really hot weather? Yeah, I mean, I have it out there with all the other plumeries. All the other plumeries love it. The love of the sunlight that I was getting. What you might do is maybe move it um, in midsummer when we have longer days. Oh, okay. You know, in the spring when it starts out, I'd probably give it as much light as possible because plumeria light, full sun, yeah. right? And then well, as the days get longer, maybe move it into – it's in a pot still, Yeah, right? it's in a pot, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm going to leave that one in shade. a pot for a while. So, yeah, so I was thinking on this one if it was sensitive to that too, but it seems like it – doesn't mind the full sun and looks really healthy john great job yeah it does look good yeah and i i think i spent thirty dollars for a bulb that was the size of my fingernail <laughs> and now and just ten, in this one ten pot. years later yeah you've got that one i brought it to you because it was blooming but i also have eight other pots of it really yeah so are you gonna plant them dude are these bulbs kind of go for you worried about that at all or no? I, I, you know, I decided not to worry about gophers. <laughs> just, just if I don't see them, I'm going to battle them. <laughs> but otherwise, it, I just can't worry about cages everywhere. Have you seen them lately? Or, yeah, or, or him or her lately? Yes, they actually are in my son's lawn right now. Oh, bummer. So, oh, they're they're aerating the soil. Is that what? That they're yeah, definitely when, aerating. When the we soil. were trick or treating with the kids. Um, by my house, there's this large dead. It was almost eerie because it was Halloween and it was nighttime. 
Um, but there's a dead tree in one of the neighbor's house, and we're walking by it. Oh, perfect hear it. Halloween I, prop, huh? Well, I hear it perfectly clear, the hoo, 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 hoo. And I was like, there's an owl somewhere around here, and it's dark. You can't really see real well. Uh-huh. I look up in the tree, and there are these two massive owls. They had to be standing really? probably about a foot and a half tall right, right on up these the, right branches. Up this, right up the road here, right? Yes. And they were they were scoping out some really? nighttime critters for sure. Screech owls, right? I, I don't. I mean, I don't know. I don't, not I, a barn I, owl. You'd wonder. I couldn't though, around see here? them. It was dark. All I saw was the silhouette of these owls. But it was I've, perfect. I've got owls at my house. I and, like and owls. owls. I would love to have a domesticated owl. Yeah, I love owls. There's, it, there's a guy on YouTube. Harry Potter. A lot of domestic. <laughs> oh yeah. There's a guy on YouTube, yeah. and uh, he's got a sanctuary in Florida. He's got alligators. He's got venomous snakes, and he's got an owl that he that he brought up and he raised. And he taught him to, you know, fly off the glove and come back. And oh, kind of like they do with hawks or whatever. Exactly, and yeah. uh, just a beautiful owl, just a wonderful owls owl. are. They, yeah, they're they, cool. I they intrigue me. They do me too. Hey, we got to take a break. We've got uh, two more segments coming up after this. So those on Facebook Live, questions, comments, keep interacting. Those on Biz Talk Radio, we thank you for listening every week. I'm Brian Maine, John Bagnasco, Tiger Pelafox. Back after these messages for you on Biz Talk Radio. Okay, we are right back here in the studio, broadcasting from the iHeart Media and Entertainment Studios, the World Domination Headquarters here in San Diego, Tiger. We are glad to be part of your weekend. Glad that John is here this morning. You yeah. showed up. I made my way into the studio. Yeah, we were glad you showed yeah, up. Yeah, I Thanks, appreciate Brian. that. We appreciate all of you. You know, people on Facebook Live that are watching us, little do they know we can watch them, too. Yeah, we're watching. So, we have these big monitors here careful. that we see everybody's. Make sure you're dressed appropriately for the yeah. show. That's my best advice. Jill, we see you. Uh, yeah, yeah. What 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 Tiger said. Um Hey Linda in Redding says they're getting a lot of rain. That's awesome. It's on its way so down here. Maybe it's coming down, yeah. Yeah. It'd be nice. It's winter. You know, I think Tuesday and Wednesday the highs in the fifties. The highs? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's, and we're we got snow in the mountains already. Oh, the, oh I didn't know. Yeah, that. we got snow in some of the mountains. So um another thing that was fresh on my mind to mention people right now because I mentioned Halloween. Everybody who's done with their pumpkins. And if you throw your pumpkin in the compost bin and you want it to break down quicker, number one is you have to break the pumpkin because they tend to right. stay pretty nicely if you don't break the They'll pumpkin. They'll just rot within themselves. But number two, if you throw a pumpkin in a compost bin, you're going to get nothing but pumpkins growing in wherever you spread that compost. Because you, you can't break down those seeds enough in a home compost bin to sterilize them and then spread them out in your garden and not get pumpkin plants growing. They're easy all. to pull up, though, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, but there's so many. You're not going to miss them. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say there's just so many. I um, have uh, castor beans coming up everywhere. Castor beans. That oh, red, my gosh. the red one. No. No. No, the green one. Oh. They're, I usually see the red one around. Really? Like, you, 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 it just came up in your because of where you live, right? Or did you? Right. Didn't, no, there was uh, there was a big almost a tree of it <laughs> and it had gone to seed and there were seeds everywhere oh and, man and we since have taken it down but i i would say without exaggeration there's several hundred that i've pulled up this year <laughs> and there's still more coming yeah. up yeah oh, yeah and those were the only ones that germinated now just wait till all the other ones that have germinated well later. i thought if i was diligent i would eventually catch up to the seeds and then i looked at my neighbor's house next door <laughs> he's got the biggest castor bean plant <laughs> i've ever seen in my whole life it's probably uh, about 15 feet tall really and just as wide oh wow it's just gigantic oh, you could man. probably cut the tree down and and put it on the fire for logs that's how big it is <laughs> is it is it fast growing yes Castor beans. Oh yeah, really yeah, fast. Very fast. And they then the seeds. Like like the what? seeds are what they make the rice in out of. What about and castor oil? Castor oil. Castor oil. I think castor oil also comes from the seeds. Right, which they used to give kids when they 
back in the old days when you didn't feel good? Was that uh, was that what they used take to a give? spoonful of castor oil? Was it that with the, Dana the oil? Says her parents gave it to her. Yeah, yeah. Well, there was that nasty. Movie, there was that movie where it, they were having like an eating competition. He ate some castor oil so he could puke up on everyone. Uh, it was, I can't remember. I don't what, remember that movie. Was it Stand by Me or something like that? Um, I don't know. But hey, the I'll, go ahead. The castor bean right. plant. They grow really, really fast, Brian. Like, you know, that 15-foot bush that you're talking about, that could have been just in one year. <laughs> you know? Well, for height, yeah. but this right. is also know, wide, huge yeah. trunks. Um, oh, cod liver oil. Oh. Uh, well, castor oil, too. Yeah. Right? I think both, yeah. That's how that your parents knew you were sick. <laughs> if you because, said take it, no. If yes. you if all of a sudden you said, "Oh, I'm better now. I don't need that." Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. Well, I suddenly feel good. <laughs> I want to go to school. Right. Yeah. Well, the what, bus just left. What was I thinking? What oh. was I thinking? Hey, Jose says that his wife um, uh, wanted to raise worms. Uh huh. So he filled a barrel with native soil, uh-huh. and in a few weeks they had worms. Oh. He says to this day. She thinks I bought them somewhere. <laughs> I hope she's not listening to the <laughs> to yeah, the show, show Jose. Yeah. Because then she's going to wonder what other things you've been keeping from her all these years. If if you want to attract even the nightcrawler worms, just the you know, earthworms, they really love melons. So if you just take like a half cantaloupe or watermelon and you just put it on the ground, you go out there a couple days later, you go under it, You'll have beetles. You'll have worms. You'll have a bunch of stuff just eating it's that like Party carcass. Central. Yeah. And they're all the, clubbing. Yeah. Yeah. Sow bugs. <laughs> a Bugs Life movie is happening bugs under life. there. <laughs> Lenore wants to know if adding rocks to larger containers are going to help uh, stop them from tipping over mm-hmm. in the winds. With the kind of winds we get, well, she, the she's rocks in, Is she would, in Canyon Country? She's in Canyon. So that's country. a lot of wind comes through there. Right? Yeah. So maybe if you added cinder blocks yeah. to your containers. Yeah. You need, but it, you know, if you have heavy winds, the best thing to do is to either lay down or after it's tipped over, let the plant lay down till the winds stop. Yeah. And I mean, because you're adding weight, you're you're just trying to add weight to the the base of the plant, so right. hopefully it doesn't blow over and it. It all depends on how much wind and how right. much sail the plant has. You right. know, cinder block um, bricks, what every college student used to use to make their tables. But Cinder blocks. Put them on cinder right. blocks. Really? And make, yeah, super cheap. Yeah. You, yeah. And then you know those big uh, uh, those big tables, the big spools? That, of uh, For wire. For, for wires? Cables. Cable yeah. wires, big spools. That made a good table as well. <laughs> got to um, get ingenious. But, Lenore, I will say, in if you're trying to add weight to a container to keep it down i mean you know whatever you can do to weight but the one problem with rocks that people have had is there's still some voids in it and then the soil settles over time and then next thing you know you know it's very lowered in there sand is another good weight but it fills up every void and yeah and it still allows for the drainage so sometimes you can get a little bit more weight out of the sand putting in the base of a container but if you have a tall plant, yeah. it's just going to blow over. Yeah. No matter what. No matter what. I What I've done is I took uh, metal stakes, pounded them into the ground, and tied the trees that I have that always blow over in the wind until they get planted. Yeah. Tied them to that. And the winds were so strong that the the uh, magic dogwood that I have uh-huh. – Bent the stake and the whole thing blew over. over. Pulled the metal stake over, so nothing would have would have kept that going. You know what? Mother Nature poo poos you. Yeah. The wind says poo poo, John. It's gonna (laughs) blow over anyway. My favorite castings, John. (laughs) Castings you. It's one of my favorite (laughs) things when we go to Hawaii is poo poo. Poo poo platter. Yeah. Referring to. You go to a luau. There's gonna be poo poo. (laughs) Poo poo -poo before or after. Gina wanted to comment on the waiting 10 years for that bulb to bloom. She says, yeah. no thanks, huh? Yeah, she says, I have a hard enough time waiting for spring. <laughs> <laughs> you know, have you Forget talked to her? Forget the 10 years. Have you spoken to her? Maybe you have about the move from Temecula to Idaho and how gardening just radically changes. Oh, yeah. Because it's like. But you know what? She, being raised in California, she likes the 
the difference. Oh, yeah. Learning new things. Oh, oh yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. And being able to grow different things. But you can't just garden all year and, round. I mean, and, she's no. got to bring stuff in the house. or yeah. And you we'll know. talk to her in a few few more years and see if the, the novelty of it is still there. I think she's actually getting more into it really? as she learns yeah, what to do when. Nice. It's nice to have a rest in the winter. It is. Forced. Yeah, taking a break. It's kind of yeah. like it's kind of like when you know some days here in Southern California, some days we just can't do much. You know, maybe it is a real rainy day, and it's nice to have that break. And you're just like you're 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 forced to just do nothing mm-hmm. because there's nothing to do. Dana says you made it sound like her parents were mean. They actually gave her mint flavored cod liver oil. <laughs> <laughs> How is that any better? Oh. I remember my mother telling me, you know, when I was a kid, Ugh. her explaining when she was a kid how they used to force stuff down her throat. Yeah. Who would ever think of taking the liver out of cods and, and making, making it oil? oil. oil. We always, yeah, who would ever think and about a lot of things? why not salmon liver oil? Why is it cod liver? Cods are healthier. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's so weird. Or more pre- prevalent. Lisa said it doesn't make any difference. You just hold your nose and you can take it. Just, just take, yeah. And then Dana says, uh, John, nice jacket. <laughs> That'll be a – we're doing a fashion segment right now. Yeah. Thank you for – Well, John is, John looks like he is dressed in the studio for winter. Okay, right he's now. got – I see three layers. Are yes, there more? he does. It was – there's three layers. But when I got up this morning, it was 45 degrees. Now, you know, a lot of people that are listening in much colder states <laughs> wish say, it was 45 yeah. degrees. That's, yeah, a, that's a heat wave. wearing a T-shirt they, and shorts. It's 45 <laughs> degrees at noon for them. <laughs> it's, it's weird. Sometimes, I remember when I went to school in Flagstaff, Arizona, dead of winter. It, it would snow all the time. So let's say it was 30, I don't know, 32, 34, 35 degrees. I was okay going outside in short sleeve shirt, you know, getting some wood, bringing it back in the house. Yeah. But sometimes here... 50, 55 degrees seems even cooler. Yeah. I, I'm just like, oh, I can't take that. You know, <laughs> got to have a jacket on. Uh, uh, Lenore says she got to 39 last night. Wow. So, I mean, that's jacket weather, right? Yeah, that's something. You don't want to put a light sweater on, I think, right, John? <laughs> I'm older than you guys, too. We have to take a break. I'm looking at the clock. We have to stay on time for the network. So we're going to take a break. Uh, one more segment coming up here on this Saturday morning or maybe Saturday afternoon. So get those questions, those comments in on Facebook Live as we continue after these messages on Biz Talk Radio. All right, gang, this is it, our final segment. We have made it. It's been a a great uh, rock dust worm castings kind of a day here on uh, Garden America and a lot of other things, castor oil, cod liver oil, forcing bulbs. Carla has a quote of the week, not uh, an official quote of the week, (laughs) but she says she remembers reading a quote where she said that rainy days were for gardeners to clean their house. Yeah, good one. Yeah. That is true. We had um, really clean homes in Michigan. <laughs> she got three months of uh, nothing. Nothing. Yeah. So the big debate now that Halloween was over too, right now, is when do you start setting up for Christmas? Because I was in a box store yesterday and they were full of poinsettias. Oh yeah. And it's you so know, sad because they do not the look good. Earliest they do not look I've good. ever seen poinsettias. I agree. And you know but, what? And I can tell by the plants. These were six-inch plants that looked like they were four-inch. I'm like, why? Why? Hmm. You know, my wife brought uh, home a poinsettia uh, that she got at Lowe's, I think. Yeah, and it was a six-inch poinsettia, and it looked good. like a regular six-inch. Yeah, poinsettia. no, but yeah. these ones were not good looking. Like, you know, I remember several years ago we'd start to see Christmas commercials on TV and the radio right around Thanksgiving, and you're like, oh, it's only Thanksgiving. Yeah, they started Christmas commercials in October. Yeah. It's like, come on, please. You know, I know it's all about money and marketing, but hey, one holiday at a time. I expect I just, to see St. Valentine's Day and, 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 and uh, you know, commercials, you know, get those cards now. Yeah. You know, St. Patrick's Day is coming, John. <laughs> 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 Don't be late. I think you just gave away your age. Yeah. What, St. Patrick's Day? No, you said St. Valentine's Day. Yeah. Nobody says that Nobody anymore. Says it's just I don't know Valentine's. where that came from. I was thinking of that little baby fat. Thing flying around. Cupid. Little angel. Little Cupid. Cupid, Cupid right? <laughs> Baby fat thing. 
<laughs> I've never heard anyone on the radio say, say that baby, baby fat thing. Baby fat thing. Fat See? That's what yeah. you get. We're Stick around. Get, There'll be more quotes like we're that. We're going to get letters from the FCC now. We have a uh, question from Sharon. All right. She says that her husband waters the lawn right after he mows it. Is this good for it? I don't think it makes a difference. No. No. No, I, I agree. I think it's probably better after than before because mowing before, you oh, yeah. have a bunch of wet grass I think and it doesn't cut fine. well. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely want to always water after you fertilize the lawn, too. Because they can get burned, even with some you organic need to water fertilizers. It in yeah, to get it in. Okay, um, and and it gets burned. Milorganite we've talked about in the past that doesn't burn. Right. Even some organic fertilizers will burn a lawn if you don't water it in real well afterwards. In Michigan, we used to uh, we sold an organic fertilizer in the late '60s when most people organic? didn't use organic. Yeah, late '60s, it was, yeah. and it's it smelled really bad. It was called dry canure. And it was uh, dry, dry manure, dry tur- turkey manure. Turkey, yeah. What do turkeys even eat? Bugs. <laughs> well, it's, what do you, what do chickens eat? Bugs. Well, Tur- they eat, they eat like larvae. The chickens love larvae. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they eat like but different they, grains and stuff yeah. like that. But a lot of times, the bugs like. But I, but specifically turkeys. turkey. I think that tiger's point is like, you're specifically talking about turkey waste. Yeah. Well, obviously, they came from turkey farms. Yeah. So they didn't have other kinds of waste. They had turkey waste. So so there's John at Thanksgiving carving the turkey and says, see this turkey right here? Provided He's fertilizing our, my lawn right now, pr- my provided garden. Provided our, our yep. manure. Too. Our manure. I mean, but to, uh, you know, George's point today, the best thing that people can do is just put all kinds of manure in their gardens, right? And use a diverse form of it. Turkey, steer, horse. Worm. Lenore chicken. wants you to show the rock bag again. The rock bag? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not sure you um, understand, oh, that right Lenore, there. but this is rock Boy, that dust. Is just, that's, just, you're, that's dust, all right. It's Boy, that, dust, right. Yeah, it, it's, it, it's a powder. If, if I open this bag, it would go. Poof. No, exactly. <laughs> right. And right. Oh. She said no. Carla was saying that she thought that because I. A, a pumice is a, a volcanic rock, right? Correct. Yes, yes. But this must come. This is not just ground up pumice. It must come from somewhere else. Well, I mean, he was saying it's not even from the United States. Um, he gets this from uh, France or Italy. I can't remember where he said. Um, but um, it is organic, just lava. I mean, not organic. It is just ground ground up lava um, to a real fine point. And that's what he was saying is that in order to work effectively, it's got to be ground into the finest possible powder because you can put just lava rocks out there, but they're going to take forever to break down and truly And that amend. gets into everything. You know, yeah. that's just like a potato chip bag. You know that, right? It's only half full. <laughs> you get a big bag of chips and it's only half full. Just yeah. like that right there. Look at that big bag. It is. It's half full. But this one bag can cover, you know, a 1,000 square feet or something. Well, put it in a smaller bag. Look at all that waste up there. It's not even half. It's a quarter, right? Oh, you're just saying because of the waste of the bag. Right. Yeah. Five pounds, 500 square feet. And this is a five-pound bag. Not to be applied on a windy day. Yeah. You'll probably inhale half of it. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's the funniest thing he's uh, ever said or made noise of. I love yeah. that. So, Linda so, says, uh, aren't the castor bean plants poisonous? Yeah, that's yes. what, the point we were trying to make is that that ricin, uh, which comes from the seeds, is deadly poison, yeah. and the whole plant is poisonous. In cold climates, you can go to the seed rack and buy castor bean seeds because they're used as mold deterrents. Yeah. Whether I don't know if it works or not, but since moles don't eat plants— <laughs> But everybody planted them, and they had kind of a tropical look for them. And uh, because the seasons were shorter, they never went to seed. And, you know, like you say, they, there's some actually really cool-looking castor bean plants. Like I said, there was the red one. You said, you know, you had the green one. Right. That if they were not such a uh, good reseeding plant, they'd right. actually be kind of neat to have in your yard yeah. as foliage and color. And But I would, yeah. We're going to have to end on that note. Oh, you have something real quick? you have something quick to say? Uh, it was a story, but I don't know if it's quick. Oh, 
So I'm not going to tell it. Maybe another day. Next week, remember when we start the show, John's story. <laughs> if we can a, remember. As a matter of fact, if you want a title for the story so you remember, the title is called The Chicken and the Castor Bean. Okay. All right. I think I read <laughs> that as a child. Hey, that's going to do it. Thank you so much for tuning in, whether it's Biz Talk Radio, listening to last week's show, or live on Facebook Live. We appreciate you very much. Thank you for, uh, thank you for supporting our show. It's time for me to go. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Enjoy your weekend. I guess we'll all be back here next week. Well, starting off with John's story here on Garden America. Until then, be safe, and we'll see you again next week right here, Facebook Live, BizTalk Radio on Garden America. Take care.